Before we move forward to balance your chromosomes, let's just back up a bit and take a look at the chromosomes of the fruit fly. Remember that Drosophila melanogaster has four chromosomes and in each cell, there are two copies of each chromosome. The chromosomes are numbered one through four, with the sex chromosomes being number one, and number four being the smallest chromosome and carrying very little genetic information. I want to remind you also that mutations in genes can cause abnormal phenotypes. This is a wild type fly. When a gene is mutated, you can get a phenotype that's observable. You've already seen this in our flies as curly wings. This is actually the name of the mutated gene. So remember that when a gene is named in fruit fly, it's named for the phenotype that's caused when that gene is mutated. So the curly wing gene, or CYO, causes curly wings when it's mutated. This is the same with the grapes mutation. The grapes gene is called the grapes gene because when that gene is mutated, it makes the cells look like grapes, the nuclei of the cells. This is the curly wing phenotype here versus straight wings. And the phenotype is actually really dramatic. This is also a mutation here with white eyes. So this gene is called white eyes. When it's mutated, it causes white eyes. These abnormal phenotypes can be very useful because they can be linked to another gene so that you can see when that gene is mutated or when the gene is wild type. So in this case, what you're looking at is a depiction of a chromosome. There's a wild type gene number one on this chromosome and attached to it is curly wings, CYO. So whenever this wild type gene is expressed, so is curly wings. Anytime you see curly wings on this fly, <clears throat> it will have a wild type gene. This is a depiction of a chromosome that has the wild type gene with curly wings and GFP. This is the type of linkage that we have on our balancer chromosome. So whenever you see curly wings and a green glowing fly, you know that that fly also has at least one copy of the wild type gene. Balancer chromosomes are really useful because when you have a homozygous mutant that's lethal, it enables you to maintain them. For us, the balancer chromosome allows us to eliminate the possibility of wild types, and I hope that will be obvious shortly. It also allows us to distinguish between homozygous and heterozygous mutants. So for our balancer chromosomes, the two main strengths of using this type of fly are these two things. Balancer chromosomes are fake. This is something that I missed when I first learned this, and I, I still, I think it's really important for you to understand that these are engineered chromosomes. The wild type chromosome has genes that are in order. They're always in this order so that when the chromosomes align, crossing over can take place. And this increases genetic diversity. You want this in a population because statistically it will increase survival. A balancer chromosome, you can see here, has the same genes. It's just that some of them are backwards and out of order. So all genes are there, but they're just not in the right place and they're not in the right order. So when these chromosomes try to line up and cross over, it's not possible because they won't actually have homologous regions on the chromosomes. So crossing over does not occur. And this is a real strength to maintaining a mutant fly line. You don't want genetic diversity. We want the flies to be heavily inbred and we want them to be genetically very similar. We do not want to increase the genetic diversity of our population. Our balancer chromosome is, bal is chromosome two. So it's the same as chromosome two, except remember that it's engineered. It has all of the same genes that the normal chromosome two has, but some of them are out of order and some of them are backwards. In addition to having the, in addition to having all of the genes, it also has a wild type copy of grapes. So this is probably the most important thing that you should pay attention to in this tutorial. The wild type chromosome number two in our flies has a mutated grapes and curly wings. But the curly wings gene is normal. So if a fly had two copies of this wild type chromosome, it would be a double mutant for grapes 
and it would not have curly wings. The balancer chromosome in our flies has a wild type grapes. It also has curly wings mutated and it has GFP. These three genes are linked. So anytime there's a wild type grapes present, it will also have curly wings expressed and GFP. So if you see a fly that's glowing, you know that it also has curly wings. If you see a fly that has curly wings, you know that it also has wild type GRP1. And this is what the flies look like. A fly that has two copies of normal chromosome two will be a double mutant for the grapes gene. And a fly that has chromosome two as a balancer chromosome will have curly wings, will glow green, and will also have a wild type copy of the grapes gene. So when figuring out what you're actually looking at, it's always useful to produce a Punnett square. When you're asked to look at what might happen or to consider what might happen when two flies breed, just think of it as two flies breeding. We know that the only flies that are breeding in our vials and in our bottles are heterozygous mutants for grapes. So you can set this up like a normal Punnett square where you put one fly, either the mother or the father, on the top and one fly on the side. Each of these for chromosome number two has a wild type copy of grapes and a mutated copy of grapes. The same with the other parent, a wild type copy of grapes and a mutated copy of grapes. You've seen this before, but in a Punnett square, these are the possibilities. And statistically, what this indicates is that if these two flies made it over and over and over and over again, about 25% of them would be wild type of the offspring. 25% of them would be double mutants, and 50% of them would be heterozygous mutants. So now let's make this a little bit more complicated. I've already told you that the wild type grapes also has curly wings and GFP. The, the mutated grapes does not have curly wings and does not have GFP. So you can put all three of these things together wild type grapes, curly wing, and GFP. But think about it as just wild type grapes. This is one unit. They're inherited together, so you can just think about it as one thing rather than three things. People get confused when they start trying to separate these things out. They will never be separated. In our flies, wild type always goes with curly wings. Curly wings always goes with GFP. The mutated grapes is on chromosome 2 that doesn't have anything else that's a phenotypic marker. So just like before, you have a wild type copy of grapes with the two other genes linked, a mutated copy of grapes with nothing linked. And when you do this Punnett square, what you see is you get 25% wild type, 25% double mutants, and 50% heterozygotes. Now the really good thing about our crosses is that this cross here, if you think about it, means that this fly has two copies of a balancer chromosome representing chromosome number two. This is not a viable breeding. A fly cannot survive without a normal chromosome two because a lot of the genes are backwards. So this fly is going to die. And for us, that's really good. If we're maintaining a population of flies that are breeding like this, you don't want the wild types to dilute the phenotypes that you might get. The, we want to have at least heterozygous, and ideally we want homozygous. But remember, the homozygous mutants are sterile. The females do not have normal grapes to give to their offspring. So you might think, well, why don't we just maintain these as males and females? What a great idea, except that that can't work because they're infertile. So now what you're left with is a population of these guys who never make it. These never make it out of embryos. These guys here who are heterozygous mutants and these homozygous mutants. If you're circling GFP positive, these are the flies that you're looking at. 
you're indicating that the GFP positive is there, the GFP is expressed, those flies we know also have curly wings and they also have a normal copy. These flies are heterozygous because they have to be. We can't see the ones that have two copies of the balancer chromosome. The single balancer chromosome is the only thing we can see. The ones that do not glow are ones that have two copies of mutated grapes. And these are the ones that are the most sensitive to radiation. These are the ones we want to quantify, although you might find it useful to also quantify ones that are heterozygous. If you haven't quantified heterozygous mutants, it's okay. Tintin Sue's lab only reports homozygous mutants. But like I said, if you haven't separated these out or if you did collect data on the heterozygotes, it might be interesting to compare what the effect of your drug is in these flies. So remember that the balancer chromosome is chromosome two, but it's fake. It's an engineered chromosome. On it, you have a wild type copy of grapes. The wild type copy of grapes is marked with curly wings and GFP. The mutant copy of grapes is on the normal chromosome two, but doesn't have any phenotypic marker associated with it.